Edit items. This video will help you if you cannot figure out what is affecting your element or how is your gets running, so on and so forth. Um, so let's preview this project. Let's say for instance, this is a very, very simple project, but let's say if I do this and suddenly my first name um, element is gone. Can't see it anymore. I don't know where it went, what did it. In this instance, it's very clear to me, but if it would be, if I'll have a lot of fields and I don't know what's affecting it, I can't remember, what would I do? So on any element on Titan, you have in the settings tab, you head over to conditions and it will show you all the rules that are affecting this field. So in this instance, I can see that it's rule that's named rule one. And that's a very important thing to do is to actually name your rules and that will help you locate them easier and in a way that it will make sense. And you can access it directly from here. You can see that I have my conditions. Very cool, but very important to name your rules. So I'll say on email, hide first name if. This is a very specific rule. Obviously you can have an action flow that does a lot of stuff. So give it a meaningful name and you can see that it's telling me exactly what it is. I can navigate, I can see what's, what's doing, uh, what rule is affecting my field. Another thing that I can do, um, if the field populates from Salesforce, so on and so forth, I can look at the Salesforce tab. Salesforce tab will tell me where is this field being used either by a Salesforce push or is being populated by a Salesforce get and I can immediately see what is being, where is it being populated from, navigate there and change anything if necessary. Another thing to note in the get or push, you can see that the push, it tells us map field. It means that this field is being mapped. And if for an instance, it will be used for a condition, if I'll navigate to this field, I can see that this is being for a get, it's being used for a condition. And if my get will be auto triggered, then it will run this get. So let's head over to the Salesforce um, integration for a second. Let me just access it from the Salesforce tab. You can access it from there directly, but I want to show you this in this frame so you can understand it a little better. So on each get or push, obviously get, you can trigger it in a few ways, either a user action on load or auto trigger. And in this instance is a user action, but I see that my get is not running. So what I can do is I can always head over to where it's used. And in this instance, I see it's not being invoked at all. So I know why my get didn't run because nothing is calling it. So let's say if for an instance, I would call it directly from here. And I'll say run this get. And now if I head over to my Salesforce integration and I'll look at the where used, I can see that this rule is calling it. And similarly to where it's used on an element, I can see everything that's invoking it. And the same goes for the push. So if I look at it, where it's used, I can see that a button is calling it on my homepage and that's invoking that push. Another thing to, to notice many times when you have UI issues, so on and so forth, you always want to look at the layer list and that helps you a lot to, uh, to see where things are in your layer. So that's also pretty cool. And you can just navigate through this. You can quickly see what's affecting it, so on and so forth. And this is how it's done.